Hey guys, it's Lucky Ghost here. Today we're going to be talking about the Solo Magicka Nightblade. This build is amazing for solo content, perhaps the easiest build we've put out so far. This build has a fantastic amount of life leech without having to sacrifice damage due to its second ability here, Swallow Soul. But we'll get into that in a moment. Just know that if you're looking for a build that does tons of damage while being really, really easy to stay alive on, this one right here might be your best bet. All right, let's talk about the first ability, Dark Shade. This is gonna create a copy of you that lasts 20 seconds, and it's gonna do some single target damage while doing some AOE damage occasionally, and inflicting minor maim on your target, reducing their damage by 5%. So it does a bit of damage, and it debuffs the enemy so that they do a little bit less damage. It's nice during boss fights, and it actually puts out a great amount of damage for you. The next ability we're going to talk about is Swallow Soul. This is the bread and butter of the solo mag Nightblade. This thing steals the enemy's life force, dealing 8,200 magic damage, right? It's hitting like a truck while also returning 36% of that damage back to you every two seconds over 10 seconds. This is going to provide an incredible hot, and this is the reason it's so hard to die on this character, especially when we combine this life leech with the Ring of the Pale Order, which is also going to be returning a tremendous amount of health to us, making this build incredibly fun incredibly comfortable and safe while still putting out so much damage next impale this is the ability we're going to use once we get into execute a lot of bosses in the game and in Vodashran hollows are the most dangerous when they're in execute when they hit 25 percent a lot of time you get extra mechanics extra adds this ability is going to allow you to do 300 percent more damage when the enemy hits 25 percent or below this is great in boss fights. Next, Merciless Resolve. Once you get in the habit of firing this ability off after every fifth or sixth light attack, it's going to do 18,000 damage. That's huge. It's going to add so much damage to your rotation. Great for boss fights as it's a single target ability. Not only that, if you're near the enemy, if you're in melee range, it's gonna return 50% of the damage back to you. Again, in boss fights, you typically are because they're either chasing you or you're standing there parsing on them which means you're going to get more life leech. So you've got Swallow Soul, you've got Ring of the Pell Order, and then you've got Merciless Resolve, bringing more life in. The fifth ability is going to be our Flex ability. You're going to go with either Channeled Acceleration, which is going to give you minor force and 30% increased move speed, or you can slot Dampen Magic, which converts a portion of your Magicka into a protective ward, gaining a damage shield that absorbs 11,000 damage. If you want to go more offensive, go ahead and take Channeled Acceleration. If you want to go more defensive, go ahead and take Dampen Magic. I started out using Dampen Magic, and what I found was, because of all the Life Leech coming in, I literally never needed to use Dampen Magic. It was just sitting there on my bar doing nothing. So I replaced it with Channeled Acceleration, which I used much more often, and this increased my damage, my mobility, and just made the character feel that much more comfortable and that much more powerful. Last but not least, our ultimate on the front bar, Soul Harvest. This ability is going to increase our damage by 20% for 6 seconds when we use it. So not only does it do a chunk of damage, 14,000 damage, when we use it, it's also going to increase our damage by 20%. This is huge for bursting down bosses or dangerous mobs when you run up to them. Not only that, this ability only costs 70 ultimate. So get into the habit of using this ability often. It's not like a lot of other ultimates in the game where you save it for that critical moment. This is an ability you use pretty much anytime you walk up to a thick mob and you want to help take it down faster because by the time you kill that mob after you've opened with this ability, you're going to have your ultimate back again anyway. It only takes 70 ultimate to cast and while this ability is slotted, anytime you kill an enemy, you gain 10 ultimate so all the trash that's dying around it is fueling your ultimate you'll be amazed how often this thing pops back up so push yourself to use it a lot and you'll find a nice comfortable rhythm of using this ability to the point where you almost always have it up when you want it all right let's talk about the back bar the front bar is our single target offensive where we're just really trying to dish out that spammable damage right we've got all those single target abilities right here uh in swallow soul and impale on the back bar, we've got all of our dots and AoE abilities, right? It's Unstable Wall of Fire, which is procking our Enchant and our Inferno Staff, our Maelstrom Inferno Staff. We've got Twisting Path, which is another large AoE ability that's also going to give us Major Expedition if we don't already have it from our Channeled Acceleration. And we've got Mystic Orb, which is further giving us some AoE damage. Next, we've got Siphoning Attacks. Imbue your weapons with soul-stealing power, causing your light and heavy attacks to heal you yet again 
Yes, that's the fourth ability that's healing us here. And restore 106 Magicka for 20 seconds. This ability is fantastic for not only bringing in life, but bringing in Magicka which is going to be one of the reasons that this character has some of the best sustain out of all the magic characters I've played on. Not only that, we're going to slot Elemental Drain, which is going to weaken the enemy, right, by putting Major Breach on them, reducing their resistance to our damage by 5,948. So they're going to be taking quite a bit more damage when this ability is cast on them. So be sure to cast this on any large mob, any mob with a lot of health, and of course, bosses. It also applies Minor Magic Steal to an enemy for 23 seconds, which is going to give you a 168 magicka every one second while you're damaging them further improving your sustain last but not least you can slot something like fiery rage on the back bar this is going to be your aoe burst damage for trash bags you walk up to a large pack of mobs the single target ultimate and the single target abilities up here aren't going to be very satisfying that's when you throw down something like fiery rage when you're fighting a difficult boss, try to use the front bar ultimate. And basically the way you want to use this ultimate is you want to get all of your dots down so that all this damage is hitting the boss. You know, get your dark shade up. And then when you see Merciless Resolve proc, that's when you use your ultimate and then you proc the resolve. Always use your ultimate right before your resolve. And if you're using your resolve every time it's available, you'll be able to use it twice for every ultimate that you get. That's about what it works out to. So you'll use your ultimate, you'll proc the Merciless Resolve and use it. Then you'll use it again after five more light attacks of weaving your abilities. And then by the time it comes up again, your ultimate will be ready. So you'll use your ultimate and then you'll proc your Merciless Resolve, go through your rotation again, use it again, and then your Resolve. So you'll use this twice for every time that this comes up. By the time this is up a second time, this will either be up and ready to use, your ultimate will be up and ready to use, or it will just about be ready to use. And we do this because of the 20% increased damage that this does, right? You always want all your dots ticking when you cast this, and you want this to be available to cast for 18,000 damage plus 20%, right? So that's that 20% is huge when it's applied to abilities like this. All right, and that's all of our abilities. As for this character's rotation, what we're going to do is start off with all of our buffs. So the last two abilities on both bars, we're going to use those. And then we're also going to cast Dark Shade. These are all the abilities we can use without aggroing our enemy. So we start with those abilities. That's our buffs and debuffs that we can put out. And then what we do is we move into the dots, the AOE dots on the back bar. We put those three down, go to the front bar. And all we have left to be doing now is using our spammable Swallow Soul. So we're going to Swallow Soul until these dots start dropping off, the buffs start dropping off. And anytime one does, you just stop, you reapply that buff, and then you swap back to your Swallow Soul. Being sure to use your Merciless Resolve every time it procs, but anytime it's possible, use it right after a Soul Harvest. So Soul Harvest, Merciless Resolve, use it again, and then Soul Harvest, you know. You'll see it as you're playing with the character, you'll start to feel that rhythm really come to life, where you're using this twice every time you use this, without ever really sitting on this. It'll just always be available a second time, about the same time your ultimate will come up. Next up, let's talk about our gear. For the helmet, we're going to go ahead and slot a one-piece Damahas for the maximum stamina and maximum magicka one-piece bonus that we get. It's a nice, well-rounded set. It's really useful for soloing content. We're going to wear five-piece false gods for the sustain. If you don't have false gods, you can wear something like Julianos to hold you over. For the other five piece, we're going to wear Mother Sorrow for the incredible amount of critical damage we can do. If you would like to, you can use Medusa instead. Medusa is a lot like Mother Sorrow, but instead of some of that critical, it's also going to give you Minor Force, which would allow you to replace Channeled Acceleration with something like dampen magic while still having your minor force of course we're going to be using the ring of the pell order this ring is amazing it is incredibly fun to use if you have the ability to get it get it it's a lot of fun you're going to love this ability it took my love for soloing content in this game to the next level if you don't have access to the ring of the pell order that's okay just go ahead and wear your mother's sorrow set here instead of on your shoulder and then wear your two-piece monster set you could go with something like ice heart for the free shield that you get from that and then on the back bar we're gonna use the maelstrom inferno staff the reason we use this is because it's just a best in slot back bar staff it's going to increase the damage your light attacks do substantially your wall of elements is going to continually proc that weapon damage enchantment which is why it's very important to always have that wall of elements down on the ground 
All right, let's talk about your passives. For the class passives, go ahead and take all of them. There's a lot of very useful, very important passives in here. Since we want damage mitigation, since we want increased healing, and of course, since we want increased damage, they're all gonna come in quite handy. So be sure to read up on those, be sure to understand them. It's gonna be very helpful to you when you're playing the class. They're gonna tell you that killing enemies is giving you magicka back, uh, using potions is giving you ult charge, slotting certain skills on your bars is gonna increase your max resources, values there's just lots of good stuff in there that's good to know about your character every single one of them is going to be useful especially for soloing content of course since we are using the destruction staff we're going to take all of the destruction staff passives we're going to take all of the light armor passives we're going to take the first three heavy armor passives if you want to use mages guild abilities be sure to grab the mages guild passives and we are using channeled acceleration so i do recommend that you get clairvoyance which is going to reduce the cost of using channeled acceleration and concentrated barrier which is going to give you a barrier when you block there you go you see this bubble around me that is because i have channeled acceleration on my bar and because i have that passive which is providing that barrier while a psychic order ability is on my bar and i block i get that barrier it'll absorb 5,000 damage. And since I took Dampen Magic off, here's a free way to get that shield without having the ability on my bar. And if you really want to level your Sigic Order all the way up while you're casting Channeled um, Order, you gain major protection, reducing your damage taken by 10%. This is nice to have, but you do got to get the Sigic Order maxed out to get it. So good luck with that. We're going to go ahead and take Undaunted Metal from the Undaunted Guild. For your racial passives, go ahead and take all of those. As always, you're going to grab Medicinal Use Level 3. For your moon disc, we're going to take shadow. For your champion points, we're going to put 20 into thaumaturge, 66 into master at arms, 50 into staff expert, 64 into elemental expert, 9 into spell erosion, 61 into elfborn, 37 into shadow ward, 51 into tumbling, 75 into tenacity, 75 into arcanist, 23 into warlord, 9 into sprinter, 32 into quick recovery, 64 into elemental defender, Thick skinned 56, 62 into spell shield, and 56 into ironclad. For your consumables, I recommend whenever you're doing some difficult content to go with Essence of Spell Power. This is going to grant you major savagery. It's going to grant you major prophecy. And it's also going to restore magicka while giving you magic recovery 40%. So use these on cooldown when you're doing difficult content. When you're not doing difficult content, go ahead and use Essence of Magicka, your basic run-of-the-mill potions that fall on the ground. As far as your food goes, I recommend Solitude Salmon Millet Soup. You don't need a food that's going to provide resource regeneration because your resource regen is already fantastic on this character so you might as well max out your health and your magicka. So take a buy stat food like this one. This is going to give you 5,400 health and almost 5,000 magicka, and it's incredibly cheap. It costs 17 to 21 gold. I mean, it's basically free. Alternatively, you could grab something like Arteum Pickled Fish Bowl, which runs closer to four or 5,000 a pop. The difference is only, look, 5,400, 5,000, 5,600, 5100 so for an extra 250 hp for an extra 100 mp you're paying four or five thousand more gold a pop it's really not worth it unless you really feel like the 200 hp is going to be the difference maker for you go ahead and take the solitude salmon millet soup all right guys and that concludes the magicka night blade i took this thing through vma today to test if it works uh, pretty much got the trifecta, uh, other than the fact that I accidentally grabbed the one movement speed sigil. But the no dead, the speed run, all of that, that was going to be no problem in there. And uh, we went through veteran Vatishran hollows on stream as well. And we were having a blast. We absolutely destroyed him. So I highly recommend you try this build if you're thinking about playing a magic DK. Go ahead and give this guy a spin. You're going to love him. And it's going to be hard to forget how fun soloing on one of these characters is, especially in difficult content. So if you found this video to be helpful or useful, please, please be sure to give it a like and a subscribe. That helps me out a ton. And if you ever want to hang out with someone else who loves ESO or you have questions about ESO or you need help with ESO, be sure to swing by my Twitch stream at twitch.tv slash luckyghosttv. I'll post links to the written guide in the description below in case you're interested in that. And if you need any other guests, guides about ESO, be sure to check out eso.justlootit.com. Until next time, guys.